Hi, it's Dr. Lamia Gabal, and I'm here today to explain to you about a very common procedure that we do at the office called a transrectal ultrasound guided prostate biopsy. There's several reasons why we may order this procedure in the office. The most common reason is if your PSA blood test, which stands for prostate specific antigen, if that blood test is elevated above normal, um, then that would be a reason to do a prostate biopsy. Or if on rectal exam, we're feeling an abnormal nodule, must, much like a woman might feel a breast lump, um, the only way to make sure that nodule is not cancer, we would order a prostate biopsy. The reason we do both a PSA and a rectal exam on our patients is because if either of those things is abnormal, that does warrant a prostate biopsy. Even in the setting of a normal PSA blood test, if you have a prostate nodule, then the prostate ultrasound guided biopsy is uh, indicated. So the biopsy is done here in the office. Um, for the week before, we ask that you avoid any blood thinners, no aspirin, Motrin, Advil, Aleve. If you have a headache or anything else, Tylenol is the only thing that's okay in that week before. You'll start some antibiotics the day before the procedure, usually Cipro if you're not allergic, and that goes for five days total. So the day before the procedure, the day of the procedure, and then three more days. You get some printed instructions, which will explain the procedure in great detail. And uh, on those instructions, you'll be instructed to purchase an enema. And you, when you go to pick up the antibiotics, you'll get an enema at the pharmacy. And we want you to do the enema the morning of the prostate biopsy. Most of our patients are able to drive themselves here and back. Um, you come into the office and my ultrasound tech, who is a male, will start with the procedure. He puts a probe into your bottom to do some imaging and volume measurements of your prostate gland. And then one of my assistants will come in, uh, usually my PA or my nurse practitioner, they'll do some numbing medicine through the ultrasound probe. That kind of feels like a bee sting and most of my patients say that's the worst part of the whole thing. And then they'll do 12 biopsies, six from the right, six from the left. Um, the whole procedure takes about seven minutes total and most of my patients also say that by the end of it, they really feel like they have a sense of urgency, like they really need to urinate, but that goes away by the time you're walking out of the office. So um, the remainder of that day, we ask that you take it easy, no sex and no exercise, but the day after the prostate biopsy, you may go back to all your normal activities. And there are a couple of risks associated with this procedure, which is why we don't just biopsy everyone willy nilly. Um, there is a small risk of bleeding. You should not require a blood transfusion, but you will see blood in the urine and from the stools for a few days. You will see blood from your semen even for up to a few weeks after the procedure. Um, so we want you to drink plenty of fluids and ejaculate often, and it will help to clear up that bleeding. Uh, there is less than one quarter of 1% risk of infection where the bacteria gets into your bloodstream and you might require IV antibiotics for possible sepsis. Um, that's very rare, but that is why we don't recommend prostate biopsy for everyone. But if we're recommending a prostate biopsy, we do believe that the benefits of the procedure far outweigh the small little risks. And hopefully this gives you a better understanding of the procedure itself and what to expect. And a week after the procedure, you'll then meet with me for the pathology results. We do ask that for the pathology results, you bring an extra set of ears. Usually your partner could be a, an adult child um, for them to listen because if we don't find cancer, which by far and away, most of our biopsies do not actually show prostate cancer, then you guys get to go home and celebrate. But if we do find prostate cancer, we will be talking at length specifically about what we found, about what the options are, and then about what the recommendations might be for your specific case. So that is why at the follow-up appointment, we do ask that you bring someone with you that can be helpful for an extra set of ears. Okay, thank you so much.